gentlemen, we'd like to call this meeting to order. This is the 26th annual Remembering Martin Luncheon in conjunction with the Downtown Rotary. My name is Dr. Larry. We have so many guests, we're going to do away with our normal recognition of them, but we would like to just welcome all of our guests, visitors, especially those honorees, their families, school administrators, staff, and local officials. I'm told we have uh, one of our congressmen here, Bruce Braley, I believe in the center table. Congressman, if you please stand and we can recognize you. Thank you, Congressman. As I said, this is a joint meeting with the Downtown Rotary. We are very privileged to be part of this on a regular basis. Uh, as you think about what Rotary is, you may see us as an international organization that provides uh, good works around the world. There are about 1.2 million Rotarians, 34,000 clubs, and 200 countries. Our club is about the 30, it's ranges between the 30th and the 35th largest club in the world. And we find that to be rather humbling when we think about what has been put on our shoulders. We believe that Martin Luther King Jr. would have loved our, our service motto, service above self. When you look at what Rotary does around the world, we are known for the last 25 years for the eradication, almost, we're that close, of polio. When I was growing up in the 50s, it was not uncommon for pools, swimming pools, to be closed in the summertime, parks to be closed, mothers to tell their children not to drink from uh, water fountains, schools canceled uh, graduations. Why? Because we were not sure how to stop the spread of polio until 1962 with the Salk-Sabin uh, vaccines. Since that time, Rotary's taken it upon ourselves to initially take care of Rotary in the free world and now the whole world, and we're down to just three countries and a few cases. Food projects in Liberia, water in Tanzania, those are the international flavors of what we look at in, in Cedar Rapids Rotary. But I thought it'd be good to put the local face of Rotary on today for you. Specifically, I think of our friend and colleague, Carl Cassell. Where's Carl? I know he's gotta be here someplace. Stand up, Carl. Thank you, Carl. Let's give Carl a round of applause. You all know Carl from a number of avenues, but I know him because he's a, passion, a man with a passion for Liberia. We are working on a project with our club to bring a tractor, a straight truck, and implements to Liberia. 85% of their rice is imported from China. We'd like to see that be independent in China. Or excuse me, independence for the country of Liberia. Lois Bunce, who's gonna be up here in a little bit, is our president-elect after Ted Townsend. She's a great resource for our club. She's a Rotarian. David Benson, superintendent of schools, who will be up here as well later. Great resource, he's a downtown Rotarian. So these are the local faces of Rotary. It's our pr privilege again for our club to be part of this event uh, and our, to lead us in our invocation is yet another Rotarian, Sister Susan O'Connor from Mercy Medical Center. And so we pray. God, we gather today as people created in your image and likeness. It is only in the richness of our diversity that we are a complete reflection of who you are as God among us. We pause today from the busyness of life to remember Martin Luther King, a man who had a clear vision of the importance of diversity and who worked hard to help all people learn to live together in respectful harmony. Dr. King shared his dream with us and now his challenge to us in 2012 is that we make that dream our own and that we never give up trying to make this a better world. God, we ask you to bless all of us with big dreams so we can work together to build a community where everyone is welcomed, all are valued, power is shared, and all your children know wholeness and well-being. As we recognize and celebrate the accomplishments of these outstanding students, we ask you, dear God, to give them courage and commitment for the journey ahead. Let them never doubt the power one person can have in changing the world, just like Martin Luther King did. And lastly, we pray that this event will be a blessing for all of us gathered here. 
May God fashion and mold our efforts so we have the gentle, patient courage of Dr. King, as well as the strength, steadfastness, and faith to follow our convictions as he did. For this we pray. Amen. <coughs> it's my pleasure now to introduce our, our group. Under the direction of Ryan Dignan, a slice of jazz is one of nine choral ensembles at Cedar Rapids Washington High School. SLICE regularly performs at school and community events, in addition to educational jazz festivals and workshops. SLICE has a proud history of success, including, two, including top two finishes at the Iowa Jazz Choir Championships each of the last four years and a performance at the National Convention of the American Choral Directors Association in Chicago last year. So at this time, I'm going to ask you to please stand as Slice of Jazz will perform the African American National Anthem. So please stand. Lift every voice and sing to let the heaven ring, ring with the heart. Good afternoon, everyone. Today I have the distinct privilege of introducing our keynote speaker, Judge Romanda Belcher. Judge Belcher, a native of North Carolina, moved to Des Moines, Iowa in 1992 to attend law school at Drake University. After completing law school, she remained in the Des Moines area for the next 15 years uh, practicing law as a prosecutor for the county attorney's office until in 2010 she was appointed the state's first african-american female judge now i first heard judge belcher speak just last fall right here in cedar rapids and that was uh, an evening um, for the history makers gala that particular event is a prelude to the annual african-american women's leadership conference now at that particular event, Judge Belcher was being recognized for her own personal accomplishments. Yet in her acceptance speech that she delivered with great passion and conviction, she gave praise and thanks to all of those who came before her to help her road be so successful. I was certainly moved um, by her speech. And in fact, as I looked around the room that evening, it was apparent that I was not the only person that she had touched. So right there and then, I knew as a member of the planning committee for this particular celebration and day of remembrance, that Judge Belcher had a message that needed to be delivered beyond the four walls of that room. 
And indeed, she has a very personal message that we can all draw inspiration from and that we should all take personal accountability for in delivering in our own great community right here in Cedar Rapids and the corridor. So again, I am so pleased that she was able to join us here today. And with that, I would ask that we all uh, give a great round of applause in welcoming our friend, Judge Ramonda D. Belcher. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Tim, for that introduction, and I thank the Martin Luther King Committee for having me here today. I hail from a small town on the East Coast with a big dream of becoming a judge. I have always wanted to be a judge from when I was a small little girl. I cannot tell you the person or the incident that I observed. But as a young child growing up in the South, I recognized that people were treated differently based on either their race or their economic status. And I believe judges were in a position to make a difference. And I've always wanted to be a judge. As a judge, it is my endeavor to ensure that people are treated differently and that I make a difference not only in the lives of each person that comes before my court, but also in the lives of those that I serve in my community and in those who I sit and serve with on the judiciary. I stand before you on the shoulders of Dr. King and Rosa Parks and Sojourner Truths and the Gertrude Rushes of this world. When asked about being a pioneer, I have to pause because while I had to make a lot of sacrifices and this position came with a lot of hard work, the sacrifices that I've made pale in comparison to the sacrifices that were made of those people whose shoulders I stand upon today. And one other difference that I recognize is that they too had the same aspirations as I had and as the students are being recognized here this afternoon had. They have the same aspirations. The big difference is opportunity. So we have, I have had, and we have so many more opportunities today than those who have come before us. Today we celebrate Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. And not just the man, but his legacy. We also celebrate the students who epitomize Dr. King through their service, their acceptance, their school participation, and their volunteer work. Intelligence plus character, that's the goal of true education. As we reflect upon Dr. King's dream, how do we measure up to the fulfillment of his dream. To those students being honored here today, how do you define yourselves? How do you think Dr. King would have us be defined? You are not defined by your class rank, your grade point average, nor the college you choose to attend. It does not matter the color of your skin, your gender, nor your IQ. Who you are is not determined by inheritance, genetics, nor your force of will. Who you are is not defined by what you have where you live, nor what you have had to live without. You are not defined, and it does not matter whether your hair is straight, natural, curly, or bald. You are not defined by a six-figure income 
an office with a view, nor whether you drive a Lexus Mercedes nor a Benz. Well, how do we in this pursuit of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, how do we prepare ourselves so that we can fulfill Dr. King's dream? We must be prepared for opportunity, for when preparation meets opportunity, it will lead to success. You must know how to look adversity in the face and press your way through and beyond it. You must give more than you take, and you must take all things in stride. You must know when to speak and when to be silent. Those things are important because as we go throughout this life, we are going to face challenges and disappointments. There's gonna be a time for you to be quiet and to educate yourselves and to listen. And there will be times for you to speak up and to speak out against injustices. You have to give of yourself more than you expect to receive in this life. And no matter what, you must take all things in stride. Don't let any situation, any grade, any person allow you to think differently of yourself, allow you to change who you know you are. So what is this content of our character that Dr. King hoped that we would be judged by? What content of our character do we hope each of you will display as you go throughout the life and fulfillment of your own dreams. You must be accountable and compassionate. You can command respect just by your very presence in a room. You must be civil in disagreement. You must be selfless, honorable, and wise. You must also admit mistakes and appreciate correction. Everything you do, everything that you say have a consequence. And you must be prepared to be accountable for what you do and what you say. You must understand that everyone is not gonna come into life with the same advantages or disadvantages that you may experience. And you must be compassionate. Express compassion towards others who may find themselves in a different position in life than you may find yourself. You are going to be in disagreement, but always be civil. Respect others' opinions, other views, but be civil in that disagreement. Being selfless, give of yourself. Be honorable. Let your word be your bond. Be giving. It's okay to sacrifice something you wish to do to help and assist others. And recognize that you, just like me, and everyone else sitting next to you, we will all make mistakes but know how to appreciate correction. Know how to admit when you are wrong and appreciate correction. Not only are you gonna make a mistake, but others will make a mistake also. So continue to express and show your compassion and be forgiving as you go about fulfilling your own dreams. You must have character and integrity. Be confident assured, and yet exude humility. Be truthful, forgiving, and wise. You must seek justice no matter the victor. You must be respectful despite differences, and be infallible and do all things well. Endeavor to do well and to do good. 
Make sure you are confident and you are sure, but have that humility that Dr. King himself had. Character and integrity. Know who you are and be able to stand by the person that you are. Have integrity. Be truthful. Be wise in the decisions that you make. And again, recognize you're going to make mistakes. But learn from those mistakes and add to your life wisdom. You must have temperance, dignity, and a kind spirit. Encourage, exalt, and be faithful. I will also ask that you know your purpose. Your purpose is something that I believe is something that is defined, something that comes from within you. My passion is acting. I believe my purpose is being a judge. How else would I have known from a young age that I wanted to be a judge and I wanted to make a difference in the world? So know your purpose and recognize that sometime your purpose may be different from what it is you think you ought to be doing in life. But be willing to follow your purpose. First you must know your purpose and then follow your purpose. And if it be such that your purpose lines up with your passion, follow your passion. For me, as a prosecutor, I enjoyed being a prosecutor. But it was important for me that I matriculate through the Polk County Attorney's Office in a way that gave me an opportunity to fulfill my dream. And that was to become a judge. I never knew what type of law I wanted to practice, because I never intended to practice law. I always wanted to be a judge. And I had an opportunity, since, since my whole focus was making a difference and giving back. As a juvenile prosecutor, that was the most rewarding experiences that I had because I felt like I was making a difference in the lives of the young people. But I knew because my goal and my dream, and I believe my purpose, was to be a judge and to be in a position to have a greater impact on the lives of others and having and making a difference in the lives of others. That while I was in a most rewarding position, I had to move out of that position in order to continue in my purpose and not necessarily follow my passion. So make sure you know what your purpose is in life. So walk in your purpose, follow your passion, and live your dream. I challenge each of you, as you strive to fulfill Dr. King's dream, by leading with excellence and serving with grace. Set an example, be an example. It is so important that you be the person that you want to be, how you want to be perceived. How you conduct yourself says a lot. Perception may not always be what it appears to be, but your perception and reputation will precede you. So make sure you know who you are. Make sure you don't allow any experience change the person that you know you are. No grade, no person, no experience. And be comfortable in who you are, and I say whose you are. As you embark upon fulfilling your own dreams. Understand that so many people went before us and laid a foundation. So although we too have to work hard and we have to sacrifice, so many ways have already been made. So many things that we strive to do and strive to become have been made easier for Dr. King and the Rosa Parks and the certain children of truths who went before us. So as I close, I would ask that once you reach your dream, reach back. Reach back and encourage and inspire others to follow their dreams, to walk in their purpose, to live in their passions, and to make their dreams a reality. Because in doing so, we all can truly say, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are all free at last. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Judge Belter, for those um, inspiring words and wisdom that I think not only are, are wonderful words for all the students that we have here today, but also for all of us in the audience. Thank you for joining us today to recognize the 22 student leaders who demonstrate Dr. King's honorable characteristics through volunteer work, school attendance, and positive behavior. And this is what we all wait for, to uh, congratulate these, these wonderful young people who are part of our community. Each of these students was nominated by a school administrator or a faculty member. And at this point, we would like the students to come up to my right, uh, to, the, to the side of the stage. And if you would line up by your name, we would uh, appreciate that. It's going to take a few minutes to get all of them up here. <coughs> and then uh, joining uh, Judge and myself, Doug Laird and Dr. Dave Benson, Superintendent of Cedar Rapids Schools, are going to join us up here on the stage to congratulate the students. Adriana Baca. Adriana's leadership and commitment to provide for the disadvantaged is evident as she lives a life of service to others in our community as well as in Mexico. Her willingness to include all students in her circle of who is important is a great example to follow. Michaela Bike. Michaela feels she can make a difference, leading by example and following the motto, treat others how you want to be treated. Your life is what you make of it. If you work hard, good things will come your way. Nayla Renee Bell. Nayla is a great leader and often sticks up for her peers even when it's not the popular thing to do. She consistently shows empathy and understanding toward others by ringing the Salvation Army bells and mowing an elderly man's lawn. She likes to think if the situation were reversed, how would she feel in their position and how she'd want somebody to help. The quote she lives by is, imagine yourself in their shoes and treat others the way you want to be treated. Tyler Burrell. Tyler has strong leadership qualities and is a true leader. He is equally respected by his peers and school staff members. He is very involved in school and maintains an excellent academic record. The motto he lives by is, if not you, then who? If not now, then when? He believes that there is no better time than now to go after opportunities. Patrick Conlon. Patrick is a very accepting student, and his motto comes from Samuel 2424. I will not give God that which costs me nothing. He demonstrates this when he lends a hand at school and is always willing to offer assistance. Capriya Davis. Capriya's teachers describe her as respectful, hardworking, and enthusiastic about learning. She knows you have to believe in yourself and support your actions and not just go through the motions. The quote she lives by is, To accomplish great things, we must not only act, but also dream, not only plan, but also believe. Connor Hammonds. Connor is non-judgmental and open to others' opinions. His favorite quote is, A man can't ride your back unless it is bent. Martin Luther King Jr. To Connor, this quote means you shouldn't let other people shake your faith in what you believe in. Carrie McCartan. Carrie uses her role as a leader to bring people together and has inspired her classmates to serve others in our school, our community, and our world. She believes it's the small acts of service that can make a big difference. The quote she lives by is, In this life, we cannot do great things. We can only do small things with great love. Aisha Morrison. Aisha's motto is, When you smile, the whole world smiles too. She tries to put a smile on her face every day, realizing that tough times won't last. This smile allows others around her to feel the joy she feels about her life. Sean Murphy. Sean tries his best to help others who are in need, and he uses his talents to help, whether through sports, piano, or other activities. His favorite motto is, life is full of opportunities. The people who take advantage of the good and try to help others get the most out of it. Emily O'Brien. Emily is able to get along with all students, be non-judgmental, and support positive interactions with students and staff. Her motto is to live life to the fullest. 
She also believes that knowledge, relationships, integrity, and passion are keys to living life to the fullest. Francis Adubasa Francis's positive attitude is contagious. He always gives 100% in the classroom and in athletics. His motto is, follow your dreams because hard work always pays off. He believes hard work helps you achieve success and enjoy a good life. Sruthi Palaniapan Sruthi is a true leader, leading by example and brings out the best in her peers. She consistently puts forth great effort to do the best job she can. Sruthi's quote is, whatever your life's work is, do it well. A man should do his job so well that the living, the dead, the unborn could do it no better. Jenna Printy. Jenna always has a smile on her face. She thinks of others before herself, which is a skill not many middle school students have. Her motto is, treat others the way you want to be treated. She feels it's really important to respect everyone, and her actions show she lives by her motto. Katie Ramsey. Katie often sticks up for and protects those she feels might be at a disadvantage in any way. She lives by the motto, do the right thing. It will gratify some people and astonish the rest. These words are a reminder that morality will always prevail over indifference. Emily Roberts. Emily leads by example and often reaches out to others from all backgrounds and has the ability to lend support and guidance. Her motto is, you may not always be the best, but you always have the ability to do your best. You can help determine your success if you always try your hardest. Lyndon Runnels. Lyndon's motto is, you only have one life, live it as best you can. She believes you should stand up for others. You don't have to be friends with everyone, but you should care for all people. Salia Savalio. Salia is involved in many athletic activities along with show choir and was the lead in the school's musical last year. She believes the biggest reward of happiness is receiving when giving to others. Her quote is, we make a living by what we get, but we make a life by what we give. Carly Silver. Carly is well liked by everyone and always goes out and tries to do her best. Her motto is never give up and she works hard and knows that if she puts her mind to it, anything is possible. Aaron Stark. Aaron is a role model by treating all his classmates with fairness, kindness, and respect. He believes in the golden rule as his motto, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. It may be an old saying, but it shows that being fair is timeless. Darian Thompson. Darian goes out of his way to bring out the best in others. He feels you will have many friends and be very successful in life if you simply follow the golden rule. You should treat others as you would want to be treated. Jawan Damar Walker. Juwan's character and personality make him a great example to those around him. His favorite quote is, Love as if you were to die tomorrow. Learn as if you were to live forever. Juwan feels that without knowledge, we are ignorant in our own ways. The more knowledge we have, the more change we can bring about. Let's give him a round of applause. Aren't those a wonderful group of uh, students and future leaders for all of us? Um, I think we should be very, very proud of them. And um, even though we're going to be taking some pictures of them, uh, I think they'll be around for a while so you can stop up and congratulate them. They certainly exemplify Dr. King's characteristics. And um, we great, greatly appreciate all your work. So one more round of applause for the students. If you stand up, please. Um, an event like this also takes a great deal of planning, and I'd like to thank our sponsors. You can see them uh, on the screen up here. 
Uh, many people come together to make this a uh, reality, and we did have a sellout crowd today. I think we have about 500 people participating. So thank you to Rotarians who came today, as well as the school administrators, families, students, and everyone else. I'd also like to do a special thank you uh, to the Martin Luther King Committee and also to the United Way staff who spent a lot of time putting this together. If they'd like to stand, I'd just like to give them a round of applause for all their planning. Also, um, a couple other special thanks. Uh, special thanks to Barb Elam, who founded the Remembering Martin Luncheon back in 1986. Barbara's at the front table. Thank you, Barbara. It's come a long way, hasn't it? Thank you. Also, to Hannah White Photography. Hannah's doing some photography for us today. Thank you, Hannah. And also to uh, Beth Malicki for doing the voiceover on the presentations because it saved me from reading them all <laughs> this year. So thank you, Beth, wherever you are. <laughs> um, this afternoon, the students are going to be in a leadership seminar right here at Kirkwood, and um, that kind of completes their day. Uh, we don't want you to run off. We want you to stay up here so we can take your picture. And also, just a reminder for those of you who are Rotarians in the audience, that next Monday, January 24th, Dr. Susan Curry, Dean of the College of Public Health, will be our speaker. She is from the University of Iowa. Uh, we want you all to have a wonderful day. Remember Martin Luther King and his characteristics as you go through your work, not only today, but for the rest of the year. Thank you for coming, and Rotary is adjourned. <laughs>